All right, so our very last chapter of the year, we are looking at three-dimensional shapes. So in our last chapter, we were finding area and perimeter. We're using all of those same formulas in this chapter. We still do our three lines of work. Um, but before we jump into those formulas and solving, we're just going to talk about three-dimensional figures. Okay, so they're called polyhedrons as long as all of the surfaces are polygons. Now, a circle is not considered a polygon, okay? So it has to have straight lines on it. Um, we have faces, which are the actual shapes. We have edges, which are the lines. And we have vertices, which are the corners. So this picture right here, we're pointing at the faces. The vertices are the corners. Here's one of the edges over here on the right-hand side, okay? Questions there? All right, so here's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be counting how many faces, edges, and vertices there are on each of these shapes. Now, the hardest thing about this chapter or this section for a lot of kids is looking at this two-dimensional picture because this is a, just a flat picture and imagining actually having this object in your hand to be able to turn it around and count how many there are um, of each of these items. So how many faces would you say are on this polyhedron? We agree with seven? Okay, we have the front and the back, and then we have the rectangles that wrap around. So we have a total of seven. How many edges do you count? How many lines? What's your guess? Fifteen. Other guesses? Sixteen? Seventeen? Fifteen? So... The best way to do this is to come up with some sort of organized way to do it to make sure you don't forget any. So you would maybe start with the front. Okay, so we got five there. We also have five on the back. So there's ten so far. And then we just have the lines that connect in between. So that's a total of 15. Okay, vertices, those are the corners. How many corners are there? Okay, so that's the five on the front, and then there's five on the back. Questions? Okay. A net is a 2D pattern that we can fold into a 3D figure. So imagine having a cereal box, and you cut one of the sides up and then lay it all flat. That would be the net of the cereal box. So if we were going to draw the net for this picture... We could start by drawing a pentagon. That's a terrible pentagon. Pretend it's a good one. Okay, and then we have the rectangles that come off of each of these sides, right? And then off on one of the ends, like this, we could draw another pentagon. So that right there would fold together into this prism. Okay, and there's lots of different ways to do this. You could also have the rectangles like this, and then we have a pentagon up here and a pentagon down on the other side. Okay, that would also fold together. Questions there? All right, so we are going to be counting the faces, edges, and vertices. You guys have the pink, the blue, and the white in front of you. They are nets. What you want to do is fold them together three-dimensionally and count each of these, and then we will fill in the table. All right, so this is what each of the shapes look like, and I'm going to ask you just by calling out the number, the number that I hear most is what I'm going to write down. So how many faces were on the blue one? Six. Good. Vertices? Eight. Eight. Twelve. We'll go with 12. Okay. What about the pink one, which was a triangular prism? Four. 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 Six. This one? Five. Six. Nine. Okay. Now let's think about a cube. A cube is going to be really similar to which of your shapes? The blue one. All it was was this blue one, but it's shorter. So would it have the exact same numbers as the blue one? Yes, it would. All right. A pyramid. These are like the pyramids over in Egypt. What shape is on the bottom of those? 
Okay, so we have. So it looks like this. So imagine this one. How many faces does it have? All right. So the pattern, which you have the formula on your notes, don't you? No. Did I take it off? Yeah. It's e equals F plus yeah. B minus C. So this will always work. What do these letters stand for? Everything. Equals Edges, Edges faces, faces, vertices. vertices. This will always work. Okay. That's how you know that you have the right numbers if you want to check it. Okay. That's Euler's formula. Questions there? We can handle this part of the homework? No, thank you. Okay. All right, so we're going to draw the nets for each of these, okay? And we're going to label them with the numbers. So what we're going to do, let's focus on these rectangles that are wrapping around, and let's draw those first. So we're going to start with that front rectangle, which is 10 by 15. And then next to it, is, is it the exact same size rectangle? No. This one next to it will be this one. Is that the exact same rectangle? No. It's a little bit skinnier, isn't it? Okay, because it's only eight. So make it a little bit skinnier. What about the next one? Going to be back to 10. And then the next one will be eight. Okay, now we're missing what? The top and the bottom. Okay, can they attach anywhere along here? Yes. No. Imagine folding those rectangles around and then just the flap coming down. Does it matter which one it's attached to? No, it doesn't. Okay, so it can be anywhere. So we can put it right here. And then down here, does it have to be on this one? No. No, it could be anywhere. And that's enough for labeling with numbers. All right. This one, just so you know, has a hexagon on the bottom. What do you think is the easiest way to draw pyramid nets? Draw a hexagon and then the triangles. Yes. Draw whatever shape is on the bottom, and then the triangles come off like a, a sun. So this one, we draw a hexagon. How long are each of these lines that I'm drawing right now? How long are each of these lines? Those are fives. Okay, and then all we do is draw all of these triangles that are coming off of each of these. And how long are each of those lines that I just drew? Those are all eights. You don't have to write all of them, but we get the idea after a couple that those are all eights. Okay, the cylinder. What is this going to look like? What shapes are we going to draw? So we have a rectangle, and we have two circles, right? So think about a soup can. If you were going to take the top off and the bottom off and then cut up the side and lay it flat, you would have a rectangle, right? And then two circles. So let's draw that. We've got a long rectangle, and the circles can attach anywhere. Okay, they don't have to be on the same end. So we would roll that up like this, and then the top and the bottom would flap down. We would have our cylinder. So what number goes along this side right here? This is the height of the cylinder. That's 20. We're all taking notes, right? Okay. All right, so where am I going to draw 10? Okay, so right on the circle here, we have 10. But what would this be? <clears throat> one second. What would that one be? I know you know it. I'm having everyone think about it a little bit. So let's imagine putting this back together, okay? That blue line. Everyone imagine this. We have a rectangle. We're going to curl it around so that it connects. And the circle comes up on the bottom. 
what is that distance of that rectangle along the bottom? That is the circumference of the circle, right? How do you find the circumference of a circle? Pi times 10. Pi d. Do we know d? We know the d, right? Yep, that's 10. So this is going to be 10 pi. Okay, it's always going to be the circumference along there. We're going to talk about that in this chapter. All right, last thing we need to talk about is how to name things. So are there questions on this piece of it before we move on? I'm going to ask you to name these shapes on the test. So I'm going to teach you how to do that right now. Now, we have two things on this screen. We have pyramids and we have prisms. What do you think is the difference? Okay. Okay. So in a pyramid, it all comes to a point, is what he said. And in a prism, they don't. What do we know about prisms? What do we know about prisms? You told me something about pyramids, which is that they all come to a point. All sides are flat, yes. So I have here, the viewing audience at home can't see these, but um, what I have here is a, there's an octagon on the bottom here, right? So this is an octagon, and this one's the prism, right? Yep. This one's the pyramid. They both have the same base. This one has an octagon on the bottom. So tell me something about this that this does not have. What do we know about prisms? Yes. Oh, I was going to say the pyramid always has triangles. The pyramid always has triangles. Yep, that's true. Still need to know stuff about the prism. Yes. It's just basically an extension of the shape. It just goes straight out until the opposite side is congruent. The opposite side is congruent. We have two bases on this one, don't we, on a prism? We only have how many bases here? One. One on a pyramid. So we know the difference already between the two. So let's figure out just which ones are prisms and which ones are pyramids, and then we'll go back and add another word. So what is this one? Pyramid. This one? Leave some space above it because we're going to add a word above each one of these. What is this one? And this one. Sorry, I jumped down here. This one? All right. Now, the word that we have to add to each one of these is the shape of the base. Now, the kid, the thing that kids struggle with the most is the base isn't always the one it's sitting on. Sometimes it is, but sometimes it isn't. So in this one, every single side is a triangle, right? Okay, so really any of them could be the base. So because the base is a triangle, it is called a triangular pyramid. Okay, so that's the name of that one. That would be the answer for naming the polyhedron. What shape are the bases on this one? Remember, the bases are the two that are congruent to each other and straight across from each other and parallel. Okay, so this right here is the base. So it is called a, you can either say pentagonal or pentagonal. I've heard it pronounced both ways, but spelled the same. Okay, so that's a pentagonal prism. What about this one? The same. So what if it was a hexagon? Hexagonal, hexagonal, either one works. Okay, what about this one? Rectangular. What shape are the bases on the next one? Triangular. Those are triangles, so that is a triangular. And this one? Rectangular. Rectangular. Good. Any questions on that? 